on the left and on the right, there is no physical difference between these two structures. There is no reaction happening here. There is no change in the molecular orbitals happening here. All we're doing is redrawing the pi system in a different form to find out something else about it. The resonance approach to describe pi systems operates from an initial drawing of the molecule and it explores the pi overlap by the process of redrawing the position of electron density from one extreme to generate another extreme. Neither of these structures is the true picture of what the molecule is like, but together those two structures tell you most of what you need to know about the properties of this carboxylic acid anion. So it shows you that the negative charge is either localized on one oxygen or the other, but there is no resonance picture where you have the charge at the center of that structure. So although the charge is delocalized across three atoms, it is not evenly shared between those atoms. The extremely good stabilization of negative charge in this anion is a consequence of the charge being shared almost completely between the two ends, and that at each of those ends there is an oxygen atom. In order to visually represent that process, we write a different type of arrow between the structures that we're comparing. If structures are related by this analysis of resonance, then they correspond to the same molecular orbitals. So that's the test. If you draw the molecular orbitals for this left-hand structure and the molecular orbitals for this right-hand structure, if you draw those out, you will have exactly the same molecular orbital picture. If you sketch the energy diagram, it will look the same. If you plot out accurately the real shapes and the energies of the orbitals, they'll be identical because they are exactly the same thing. It's two ways of writing the same pi system. In this example, it's easy to see that because the molecules themselves are identical. These are the two extreme drawings of that structure. They correspond to a delocalized pi system, but what you know extra about that, now you've mastered the resonance analysis, is that the negative charge is shared between the two ends and not localized in the middle of that structure. You would not know that if you just thought about the overlap of the p orbitals. We could write the structure with an O minus position, or we could write the structure with the charge at the other end of the pi system. So that would correspond to a C minus type of situation. So it's the same conceptually, but when you look at these two structures, clearly as images that describe the pi system, they are different. Resonance forms do not need to look identical to be valid. And if they look different, then they must contribute differently to the true picture. And conversely, if they look the same, then clearly they're equally valid because they are the same thing. So what is that test for what is a valid resonance form and what is an invalid one, and how does one apply that test? Well, the invalid resonance forms, the ones which are not useful to explain the chemistry of the structure, are ones which correspond to something which would be very high energy if it could exist as an individual structure you know that this carbon representation is much less stable than the oxygen representation. So it is the left-hand representation with the anion localized on the oxygen, which is structurally by far the most valid representation of this type of anion. But in terms of chemical reactivity, carbon is a nucleophilic center, and that corresponds to this alternative picture. So they both have validity and the charge is spread through the whole pi system. It's delocalized through the whole pi system. As was in the case in the other example, it's not localized in the center, but it is shared between the two ends. And in this case, the charge is shared unevenly between the two ends because the two ends are different in their electronegativity. <coughs> 